Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006. I'm now going to try to explain to you how the pool bay diagram works. It's not that hard, um, so pay attention. The pool bay diagram is essentially just a representation of the Nernst equation. What is the Nernst equation? Um, let me explain. Here's a particular general chemical reaction involving electrons and hydrogens. Uh, we're assuming balanced, so A lots of an A species go to B lots, little b lots of a B species, generating water, and maybe we have using up some hydrogens over here and some electrons over here, M lots of hydrogen and N lots of uh, electrons. So this is a typical balanced reduction equation. Now, if we write down the Nernst equation, uh, that is E, the electrochemical potential, is E0 minus... 0.0591 divided by n times log base 10 times the equilibrium constant for this reaction, which is just concentration of b to the power b divided by the concentration a to the power a divided by the concentration of h plus to the power n, m. And doing a bit of simplification, we can take, because the log of products is just a sum of the logs, we can take this out to be, we can take the hydrogen concentration out and simplify that to be 0.059m on nPH, which is negative log H+. plus. Now, if you see that, that will give us overall a positive 0.0059m on n. That is indeed equivalent to taking this H plus out of this equation. Very simple. Um, why did I do that? Well, you can see here um, that if the equation involves hydrogens, this half equation involves a hydrogen, and we plot E versus pH, we will get a negative sloping line. Uh, if the H appears on the left-hand side, if it appears on the right-hand side, we will get a positive sloping line. So if we plot E against pH, we will get a sloping line, and that's what we see here negative sloping lines and here is a positive sloping line presumably because the h appears on the right hand side and indeed it does over here so that's where the sloping part comes in this is how the voltage changes as a function of ph but it also changes as a function of the concentration of the species here okay so that's the nernst equation and you can see sloping lines appearing what about equilibrium lines uh, how do we join uh, how do we find the boundaries of these regions? Well, as I said before, the boundaries occur when two species are in equilibrium. So we know that when species are in equilibrium, delta G is zero for a reaction between one and the other. And since delta G is related to E, delta G equals zero means E equals uh, zero, we can set the Nernst equation to zero. And that's what we do here. So we get zero equals E zero, standard electric and potential minus all of this and that is how we find the equilibrium line so let's have a look uh, at this um, let's first see what happens when the concentration of B is much bigger than the concentration of A in that case this number on the top is bigger than that number on the bottom and we get a positive number here but we are subtracting it so in the end, um, if we are subtracting a, a very big number of E0 and there's a large amount of B, a large amount of products, we will get a negative number. A negative number, E less than 0, corresponds to instability. So the first point is, from this Nernst equation, if we are above the line at which equilibrium occurs, when the concentration of B is much bigger than A, uh, if we're above, uh, B is unstable. Whereas if we're below, A would be unstable. It's exactly the opposite. Or we can reverse the argument and say, if A is much bigger than B, then E is a lot bigger than zero. For example, if A is very, very large here, this would be a number very much smaller than one, which is a negative number. Negative times negative gives us positive. In that case, the sum of this term and this term is likely to be positive. So in that case, A is stable above the line and B is below the line. Okay, so here's the particular equilibrium line. 
and we're saying that above the line A is stable, below the line B is stable. Let's go back to the previous diagram. What we're saying here is above this line Cu2 plus is stable and copper 2 plus is stable below. And that's what we see in this equation here. On the left hand side, reagent A, that's stable above the line. I'm sorry, we're looking at uh, this. Uh, we should really look at this one. This copper 2 plus and copper solid. We're saying that copper 2 plus is stable above the line and copper 2 plus is stable below the line. So that's good. That basically agrees with this. The more positive the quantity, the larger this the more positive on this axis, the larger E, and since E is negative delta G, large E voltages correspond to more stable species. Okay, uh, if the equilibrium involves H plus, uh, there is uh, uh, the equilibrium line has a negative slope. Well, we saw that very at the very first thing, but there's something else to mention. Um, if the equilibrium doesn't involve H+, plus, if M is 0, 0 times H+, plus gives us 0, then the slope of this line is 0, and that's what we see here. The slope of this line is 0, it's not negative, it's not positive. Uh, but sorry, the slope of this line is um, actually uh, infinity, it doesn't really have a slope, uh, and so we see here I'm sorry, let's look at this third equation. We see here uh, a slope positive here, and we see uh, a negative and positive sloping line over here. So if it's a zero slope, if there are no hydrogens involved, actually it's, it's an infinite slope, uh, it, it's a zero slope here, copper two plus, no hydrogens involved, and so we have a horizontal line. And likewise, if the equilibrium doesn't involve E0, in other words, no electrons are involved, we can ignore E0, we can ignore N in this equation, and then we can cancel, we can set that to zero, we can, set, we can solve for the pH that would occur setting this to zero and ignoring N, we can solve for the pH at which these quantities are in equilibrium. We do have to set the particular concentration for log B and log A, but it's relatively easy. Okay, so let's see how that works um, for a particular example. So we always begin by writing our pH and, and our voltages here. Minus, we'll go from minus two to plus two. These are accessible voltages for the system. And then we need to consider what kind of system we're looking at. We're generally looking at systems in solution. So the first two things to look at is what happens when the voltage gets too high and too low. Okay, so we have one reaction here, oxygen plus four hydrogen plus plus four electrons goes to two H2O. This is what happens when you have electrolysis, if the voltage is too large relative to the standard hydrogen electrode. Standard voltage is uh, 1.223 if all reagents are at one mole per litre. But if the concentrations of the species are not at one mole per litre, for example, if you change the pH, you will get this equation. This is just the Nernst equation. E equals E0 minus 0 0.0591 divided by N, M on NPH. M on NPH. In this case, we have 4 and 4 times pH. So we have a slope, sloping line of minus 1 times uh, the pH. So here is the line here in blue. Above the line, we have O2 being stable, so O2 is produced. That means to say the water is decomposed into oxygen. Below the line, water seems to be stable. Now the second line, we have two hydrogen plus, got two electrons going to H2, and this has a slope of minus 0.059 times pH. It's a very simple uh, uh, equation we have here concentration or pressure of H2 divided by the pH um, and the slope would be minus 2 on 2 again so we have a minus 1 times 0 0.059 one sloping line 
between here, uh, above this line, H plus is stable. Below this line, H2 is stable. So here's the region where water is unstable. And between here, we have the stability field of water. Great, so here are two important lines, which we usually draw. And here's the picture showing that. No problems.